Welcome in, everybody. It is an emergency pod. This is the DNVR Rapids, presented by DraftKings. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, and I'm joined, as always, by my illustrious co-counsel, super producer Yaya on the ones and twos. I love the co-counsel. Co-counsel is good, huh? That's, that's a legal a really term. One. It sounds smart. <laughs> I got promoted, uh, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, esteemed co-counsel. Council member. I feel like I should have been voted into this position. Um, <laughs> you were, by me. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Don't feel uh, illegal uh, anymore. No <laughs> <laughs> also joining us, of course, downtown Dwayne Brown. What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Happy, sure. Something like that. Feliz Navidad. Uh, <laughs> so let's get into it. Rapids. Uh, we wake up to Tommy Scoops, Tommy Bombs, Tommy Bogert from MLSsoccer.com. Uh, breaking the news, it is a Rapids trade, and they trade $1 million in general allocation money, of which they have mountains. So, you know, take that as if it's proportional it's to how much well. they have. It's not, you know, it's a lot of money, but it's not a ton of money. Um and they trade a million dollars in GAM to the LA Galaxy in exchange for young designated player Kevin Cabral, a winger. Came up through the PSG Academy, played at getting uh, free transfer to a small French club. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, so I'm not going to pronounce it at all. LA Galaxy <laughs> buy him for $5 million, um, give him a five year deal. Uh, the Rapids get him today for $1 million. He has three years on his contract. He's going to cost over a million dollars. He will be the most expensive player on the roster. It's been a rough couple years for him in L.A. We're talking, I think, 11 total goal contributions over two seasons. Last year ranked second worst in goals to expected goals. It's rough. Yeah, yeah. What, were your first, uh, what was your first reaction to this trade? My first reaction is he's young, there's potential, but damn, is this a gamble. Like, you're putting your chips in on this guy. Mostly, the gamble comes with a salary that it's $1.6 million. Uh, and, like, you don't even pay, like, it just feels like that's not the guy to gamble on right now, especially with the defensive issues you have. Right. But it was just such a weird move. But it's a move that I like because they're looking at the positions that we kind of thought needed some help. Yeah, for sure. They definitely needed some wing help, right? Wing help was 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 high up on the list after we said it a million times. I think our last 10 podcasts of the season were, guess what? The wingers didn't do anything today. Hey, these wingers need to do something. We're not getting goals. We're not getting assists. We're not getting good crosses. That being said, when you need winger help and you get the guy who has struggled to produce, did you really go get winger help? Did, or did you just get an expensive mistake? Dwayne, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts on it is I hope – uh, we don't play him as a winger. I hope that we signed him as a striker. Um, Yaya and I were talking about, you know, his goals um, have primarily come from when he's playing in the middle versus the wings. So he's played left, right, and middle um, for Galaxy, and and maybe some consistency is what he needs, and maybe he starts to develop on a squad where he gets to play in a more consistent consistent spot and gel with the players around him. So my hope is that he's actually not signed as a winger um, and uh, we, we use him as that and, and see what happens. Uh, it seems like a lot of money um, for a player who on paper has not been impressive lately. Uh, so I think that's like the biggest problem that a lot of people are seeing um, is that money versus what have you done lately. Uh, but I, I'm not going to make any judgments on this until we're about halfway through the season. So um, I have screen capped all of your tweets, uh, everyone in the comments. <laughs> Uh, and I will be keeping those as receipts for midway through the season if this goes really, really well, um, given they're mostly Galaxy fans. Uh, okay, so what's what's really, really well? Because, like I said, these had 11 total goal contributions across two seasons, started over two-thirds of the Galaxy's game last year. There's dumping lack of an opportunity. I think everyone wants it to be good. Everyone, I don't think anyone wants it to be a bad signing, but it is really tough to say that it's – there you go. Look, you got Wanners on your side at least. Uh, it's, it's an so okay people, side to be on, I guess. <laughs> I think everyone wants it, right? Like yeah. everyone wants this to be a good move, but 
right? You basically got a worse Jonathan Lewis to, to improve the wing. I wouldn't say worse. I mean, if you look at the fancy stats, yes. But I think what Cabral brings, it's something that nobody in this team actually has except for That's Rubio, true. which is like the runs. He's really like off ball. Yeah. Me and you were talking about it, like we were talking about it before the show, where like the off ball runs are like something that's really impressive we see. Mm -hmm. He's able to find the right space at the right time. And I think with Rubio, if you play him up front, that's something that they're going to really, they're really connect, uh, connect with because Rubio has a knack for finding the open guy, even when his back yeah. is turned. Totally. No, no, he's, and he has, I mean, the, from the, from just the tape itself, he has good, I would say first touch to create space to get, get up to speed. Right. Which is something that Mikey does well, which is something that J. Lou does well. Um, I think if you're rolling out the similar formation to last season, if you're rolling out, um, you know, if, if, if you want your nine and 10 with two guys outside, I think he can fit into that stylistically. I don't think it's like a, I don't think you're forcing a square peg into a round hole, but I, if you, they lacked production. So you're banking on positive regression. You're banking. You're 100% selling the fan base on positive regression. Yeah. Which I believe in. I do believe in positive regression, but you know, it's less sample size in a 30 something game season than in like the NBA or MLB or something like that where someone has a long, has an extended slump. There's less time to to balance that out with an extended run of good play, right? Yeah. Like So I don't know. The other side of this that we haven't got to yet, and I think is is really frustrating, is what last week LA Galaxy gets sanctioned by the MLS. It's a million dollar fine and a loss of a million dollars in GAM. And a week later, the Rapids give Failed. them a million dollars for arguably their worst contract. I think something that's uh, going to look understated. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Like it's like you just build <laughs> like, out one the of the hell? evil. You just build out one of the evil empires of the. Of you MLS. just bailed them out completely. Completely. But one thing about that it's it's not a hundred. It's not a million gam just this year. It's four hundred k this year, I think, and six hundred k next year, or flip flopped. So it's over a span. It's a span of two years, and that you can accumulate more gam in that time. So it's not as bad. But you're right. Like they did bail out somebody that was in the deep end. But you did get a you at that point. You also did get a you get a discount on the player because they paid about what five 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 point five million for him, mm -hmm. and you get him on a million dollars gam. That is a discount. So Absolutely. you benefit a little bit from their this is for, uh, their uh, frustrations and their financial issues right now. Yeah. No. Look, I think. I think there's a tons of ways to talk yourself into this being a really good deal. Yeah, that's what I'm right? trying to do. <laughs> there's a lot of ways of talking yourself into this being a good deal. There's a lot of ways of talking yourself into this being a disaster of a deal. Um, where was the Galaxy's leverage in this? What's their leverage? They're losing a deep – like they are getting hit hard in terms of their ability to, to play in the transfer market. And the Rapids somehow end up essentially canceling out, like their penalty completely, like they're like they're free and clear of it. Like, like I don't I I don't understand the positioning of like essentially canceling out their entire sanction. Like, someone talk me into that. Someone tell me that that's not awful. I, there's no talking. There's no talking I mean, into it. Like I don't think it has anything to do with the galaxy. I, I think the rapids are focused on the rapids, and and they gave them okay. But the, how do you pay a million dollars for someone who is probably one of the most underperforming players in the league in the last two years? I again, you're I, I'm I'm looking at it as we're paying a million dollars for a almost six million dollar, you know, you you're paying. You, uh, you're paying a million dollars for a almost six million dollar car that hasn't worked out for the race you're trying to run, and so now you're hoping you can tune it up and and make it a better a better race car. For you know, lack of soccer um, words, you know, just to put it in a different analogy. So it, it's not like you're saying, "Hey, we found this player that's not really good. Let's bring him into the MLS for a million dollars." It's Here's a player that was, was scouted to be very, very good. 
we paid a whole bunch of, you know, somebody else paid a whole bunch of money for them. Now we're going to try and take it on a discount and turn it into something really good. I don't, I don't really don't think it has anything to do with the galaxy's hole that they dug themselves into. I mean, good for a galaxy. It, it works out for them, but it works out tremendously for them. It, right, I mean, like it, I said, they basically were penalized and are unpenalized within a week because the Rapids handed them a pile of money what for their it, worst well, contract. Again, I think the Rapids are focused <laughs> for their on Rapids, worst contract. Douglas Costa might be worse. Focused on Galaxy, you know. So I, I honestly, I, I don't really care about Galaxy. I don't care if this helps them or hurts them. Like I'm, I, I, I just okay. Don't but care. if you care about the Rapids, it's a dramatic overpay for a team. A, like you're paying a team that had no leverage. You had zero leverage. What leverage did the Galaxy hold over the Rapids to hand them a million dollars? The one leverage they had was Rapids don't get free agents unless and don't get players unless you trade for them. That's fine. Bob. And that's <laughs> the leverage. On. Don't spend a million dollars on this guy. You're right. But like that's the <laughs> leverage. Galaxy is coming up to you and like, hey, man, I paid six million for it. I need something in return. Give me a million in gab, which is funny, duddy money to begin with. It's money that basically it's just evaporated immediately but that i think that's the leverage it's the leverage where the rapids are like where do we look at and the rapids also have this um have this history of going after reclamation projects going after somebody oh, yeah, that's just stressed struggling. assets yep yeah and they and they've done a really good job of flipping them and making them into actual players that help out the rapids and i think that's where they're going to go into B-Rays, and I think Logan, B-Ray, Logan, and Juan are talking about if he can play striker. He played 14 games as striker, I think, with the uh, Galaxy. He played 12 games as a striker, more than any other uh, – 10 games as a striker, second most of any of the other positions. Eight games, five yeah, games. Ten, dude, no I'm games. sorry. Like, I, only slept two, <laughs> I only slept two hours last night. Like I am not in a good place that's mentally okay. that's okay but he played he played 10 games as a striker for the galaxy and has three goals now you put him with rubio like i said somebody that can get him the ball up there kind of play that poacher and he like somebody taller as well that the crosses might finally get to him mm -hmm. he might be the striker the rapids are looking for but if he's not now you just have a lot of depth all over your forward position now you got four to five guys that can play the wing you got three guys that can play the 10 and now you got two guys that can play the striker position so mm -hmm. what it does it gives you flexibility in roster construction where now you can maybe look at a mikey and be like hey does somebody is somebody interested in him you look at a sub knuckles and be like maybe he doesn't work out and you can move him up to another place although i know mitch is smiling because he doesn't think that's possible but <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, like it's just like now you got Sam a lot Nicholson. more flexibility. Maybe you someone got... give us a million dollars in game for Sam Nicholson. Yo, we did they're a about 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 equally productive. He is a winger, Juaners, but he plays really productively as a striker. That's what I'm trying to point out. Some of his better games yeah, he come is as six a striker. One. He's six one. He's pretty big. Um, and but I think the problem is that maybe he's not a winger. So uh, you know, Rubio wasn't a winger. Rubio was a. Was a ten and disguised as a as a nine. Maybe they're so convinced that they moved Rubio back to a different position that they can now grab one of the worst wingers in the league and make him a good striker. That would be awesome. That I love be, it. Let's that go would with be that. pretty tight. Sure. Yeah. yeah like why not? <laughs> I, it, ugh, man, I don't know. Okay, so so Zardis. Uh, you know, reports that he's signing with Austin seems pretty likely. You think a striker is still out there? Or are you now convinced that this winger who has a small sample size at the nine is going to come in and be the nine? Uh, I would still go get another striker. Go get an Ole Kamara. Go get a Will Bruin. Somebody, another striker, another a veteran that can just help out and see what you can develop there. Because st I still think Gabby is going to develop into a great guy. Yeah, me too. So I think... He's not ready to start. Day exactly. One. Yeah. So that's why I'm like maybe one more striker that can just help another veteran that can help Yappy develop as well. Like, and I know that's not why you bring in players, but it should be something you think about when you're constructing a roster about how it's going to affect your younger players. So I think another striker would be beneficial. And also, this team needs a striker. You saw the difference between uh, when there was not a Sardis and when there's a Sardis. This team was a lot more dangerous in the offensive front when you got started. True. So bringing another striker in, I think, would really help out this whole team. Yeah. 
I mean, you need help on the wing. You need production from the wing, right? Like, like you need production. Last year, I believe all wingers combined for less than 10 goals, less than 15 assists, every single winger. All I'm hearing is that Kevin Cabral's going to fit right in with this Rapids group. <laughs> They're going mean, to have something to talk about. An, if you were looking for an on-brand move, this certainly fits with who was there. I just, I don't, I don't, I'm struggling. My first reaction was, oh, okay, it wasn't great. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let me look at, you know, and the, and the more I dig into it, it's just, I, I struggle to see a positive here. I really do. Positive. It's really, it's really bugging me. I don't. The positive is all the potential, literally. He's certainly high ceiling. Yeah. Right. Um, but there's a, re- but like this isn't, and I was talking to, to, to Joseph this morning after the, the, the Tommy scoops report came out, this isn't the first PSG Academy guy to come through, right? This isn't the first we've, they've gotten man city Academy guys here. Like, you know, and do you guys even know those names off the top of your head? If I were to say, uh, I don't, I'm also like half asleep, dude. And in- <laughs> No, I, I I just want to see where you're going with it. Okay, well, here we go. Here we go. Nana Boateng was from Man City's academy. Is he around or doing anything? Uh, not that I know of. Yannick Boley, PSG academy kid. Is he around doing anything? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. like, But how how is that the judgment on whether or not Cabral is going to be good? Because now that we've seen him, the other guys were okay. Well, I'm saying the reason they bought him, the reason LA Galaxy spent all this is because he's a big, he was a big time young talent from France that was identified by a huge club as a potential guy. LA Galaxy buys him for a ton, gives him chances in the MLS, and he doesn't produce. So while we are banking on potential. LA Galaxy was also banking on potential and didn't get it. What's the difference here? That uh, Greg Vanny sucks. That's again, you're right, man. Like I'm not have to use him. I mean, again, like this this kid's playing three different positions, or you know, are, are we going to keep him in one position and let him develop with the talent around him? You know, then then maybe he gets a lot better if he just keeps bouncing from position to position before he can settle in and really grow, then no, probably nothing's going to change, but that's not really how the Rapids do things. So, you know, I, I look at all of the young players that the Rapids have brought in that have been good. You know, you look at our guy Rubio, you look at Keegan, you look at even Price who came from a tier two at the time, Wolverhampton, that wasn't even top tier. Uh, and, you know, uh, has, has, has been the captain, you know, it's. We, yeah, but he was good there. That's the difference. So, Cause he was good. But he wasn't, he wasn't here. He wasn't good Logan enough. To stay on the team. <laughs> like, here we go. He wasn't good enough to stay on the team though. But be, uh, so be he's Ray not even and, evaluated to stay there. They were, they were shipping him out anyway. So there's a really good point right here that B Ray and Logan are bringing up. No pressure. This guy had a confidence issue and he could not finish. Playing in Colorado is going to let him focus on his game without as much pressure. And it's people are already down on him. So he just has to come in here and play his game without having to prove sure. that he's worth the money. Because sure. he doesn't have that price tag on him anymore. Yeah, he doesn't right. have to show the Galaxy, the Galaxy fans and all that trick his media that, hey, you know what? I'm worth all the money that they spent. Now he can just come in here with a clear head and play what he has to and play his game. And I mean, maybe that's what he needs. He's a young guy. Maybe he just needs to be able to play and throw his confidence back up. Hey, throw Juan's last comment up there. Um, look, you're right about 1 million, not necessarily hurting them, but when you only have so many, when you only have so many roster slots, when you have only so many moves you can make in a window, when you regressed from being the one seed in the Western conference to out of the playoffs, when you had, less three goal games than Philly had six goal games last season when you consistently couldn't score when you needed to what your first move of the offseason is to sign a guy who underperformed XG at the second worst rate in the MLS that's where I'm bummed out the money doesn't really matter 
but you have to build a squad ready to go into next year. The fan base needs something to be excited about. They just missed the playoffs after being the one seed. It was bad, bad, right? I mean, Rubio was great, but over and over and over and over and over, they underperformed offensively, and I just can't talk myself into this outside of potential, and that's a bummer. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. You're losing Zardes. Like, you need something there. So that's the thing. Like, you're completely right. Right now, if we go and talk to whoever in the Rapids organization that brought him in, whether it be Porik, Frazier, anybody up there in those um, in those positions, the first thing they're going to talk about is what this guy can become, not what this guy what this guy is. That's how they're going to sell it to the fan base. We can be – this guy could be this, which as a fan looking out, looking in from the outside – it doesn't feel good. It feels like, wow, you're really gambling on this guy, putting it together in a spot where it's we've already had a lot of issues as a, as a squad. Sure. So I completely agree with you, Mitch. Like, it's really hard for you to look at this and be like, wow, what the hell? Uh, how am I supposed to get excited about an X PSG product? But now, let's say they do bring in an Ole Kamara, they bring in a Will Bruin. Ooh, that'd be cool with Ole Kamara. That'd be tight. Exactly, yeah. and then they go sign another. They go sign a, a defender, and Aaron Long, uh, Bure keeps saying Callens. They, Callens they go, I don't think Long's exactly. happening. I think they're out on Long. Yeah, exactly. But like you go, you go and combine that with another. You go and combine that with another two or three signings. How are you feeling about this now? Because right now we're looking at it as the picture what this is, like what the signing is. Now, if we expand it a little bit more, we can look at it maybe like, hey, you know what? Maybe this is just another piece that comes in, and you can let them develop little by little. You can help them grow, but it comes back to it's not an exciting move right now, but it can be an exciting move even a week from now. Mm-mm. I think it can go from awful to like, okay, good, good or exciting is going <laughs> to take like a lot. You know what I mean? It's going to take like – it's going to take a lot of stuff, man. This is like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I assumed it was going to be a dumpster fire in the comments when, when, when this went through, like I really did. So it, the fact that you got people who are actually pretty excited about this, I love that. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't, that's my, this is my opinion on this. I'm not going to dog you for, for being excited about a move, but what problem does he solve? Height. He's tall. Yeah, we solved the high problem. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit replies. That's because so team building is such like an interesting thing, man. Like to me, it's like the most. It, there's nothing like second to the actual play on the field. There's nothing more important to the success of a franchise. I'm just, I don't. I just. What problem is he solving? Someone tell me what problem this solves. Because we just. Because here's the thing. Not only did you have bad play last year. But you brought you brought back Sam Nicholson and paid him a bunch of money. Not a bunch, that, yeah, relative. Yeah. But like you're paying him for two and a half more years, too, on top of that, right? So you like now you're so now you have like it's just like every winger is an underperformer on this team. I don't oh except, go except for Yaya. And who, Gabon uh, might come in and be a guy too. Uh, so Again, I I like this move because it's not just warm bodies in those positions. I feel like you have depth, and even though these guys do struggle to score, I feel like now you're getting somebody that. Oh my god, FB ref has him as five ten. Wanders is right. Sorry, keep going. I have. I was looking at Google and it's at six one. So they add a couple inches. He's probably five ten. He might even be five eight. Ugh. So he's not but, even tall. It's now like you don't just have warm bodies. Now you have underperforming players, which I think it's better than under than warm bodies. Because now you have now there's a potential there of something of something oh, going Jesus. every inch just count. My wife tells me that all the time. Oh so, boy. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think he, I don't agree with buffs. I don't think he's a warm body. I think he's. Oh. He can create runs. If you see him, he does open the – if you've seen him play, he's not a great finisher, but he does have great passing ability. He's, he's good at opening up space lanes. for himself, exactly. which is something that is important in this offense too. Exactly, and that's the thing that you don't realize. He can get behind the defenders and stay on side quite a bit. He's really good at that, especially if Wilson sticks around like Juan is saying. He's going to be a better target guy than Lewis because he's taller. He might be able to run behind the defenders a little bit quicker, so – and Lewis was already really good at that. 
So that's where the this is where it gets me excited that if he's able to get it to click with all, without all that pressure of that six million dollar uh, price tag, he might be able to actually develop into a guy that becomes a very productive player for the Rapids. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. You kind of warming me back up to just just bummed and not pissed. All right, this is progress. It's not this as is bad. Progress. Like it's just again, we're seeing this in the scopes of a fan looking outside in. We don't know where they want to put him. If they put him sure. as a striker, I think that's gonna really benefit players like Galvan, Bassett, and Rubio, because then they can run around him. They can he can move around in open spaces for them. They can, he can let him shoot. He's not a stagnant player that's just gonna stay there. That's gonna stay there There's and the wait to be a poacher. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's going to really open up space for everybody on that offense. You do have him for three seasons. Correct. Right? So if they really like him, you get him for three seasons. You have Max for three more seasons, I believe. Um, you do have like a, a younger-ish core. Um, you know, when you combine with Ralph, uh, Gus, Kata, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anybody, any final thoughts there, Dwayne? I have a real good feeling about it. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just not here for any more Rapids negativity. I'm just so over hot takes before we see the guy and where he plugs in on the Rapids and and how we, you know, how we use him. It, it, everyone, including myself, we're all taking guesses at this point. So I mean, educated um, guesses. He does have so, tape. There's not no tape out on this guy, right? There, there's tape out, but he also in the played league, well. he's now at, still at the in. beginning. He played. I think Galaxy thought they made a good move. You know, at the beginning he was playing well, and then he didn't, and and they kept shifting him around in positions. And you know, I think again, consistency. I feel confident about. Porig and Fraser developing young talent. Uh, this kid is very young. Um, he's got a lot of talent. I just don't think it's been used. I don't think he's gelled. I think there's been a lot of that lame LA pressure. And, and maybe this is the right scene change for him. And it turns into something. Maybe it totally sucks. And it's, it's a, a giant waste of a million dollars, you know, uh, it, it could be either one, but it, I mean, I, I can sit around and be miserable about that all sure. day, or I can choose to wait and see because we're still several months out from the season to see what we get and how they use them. And so uh, we also have tape on how this club works with younger players and develops them. And that's positive tape. So you, you look at Kellen, you look at, you know, Keegan, you look at Rubio, you look at all these young guys who <laughs> who have come in and have done well in the Rapids system. And this is another young kid who could also be someone who does well in that system. The only tape we have is in L.A. We don't have any tape of him in in the Rapids system. So uh, I, I'm willing to give the Rapids, you know, um, a a blank slate to see what happens, you know, and, and hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, you know, sucks to be me, but, uh, you know, if it yeah. does, yep. sucks happy, to be joined. No, I'm just kidding. Then um, I'm, I'm happy for all of us, you know, uh, so that I'm going to go on that side until I'm proven. Otherwise. Sure. I like the positivity. Yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts? Um, all I can say is hopefully it works out, man. Like you can't like be negative. Yeah. At the I mean, point he's here. There's you, no got point three, of... you got three years of him. So, yeah. I don't think anyone is hoping, but when you analyze the move, you can't just say, oh, well, this is only positive. That's that's my kind of final take is like, yeah, obviously, I, I want him to be as good as anyone. I don't want him to be terrible. I want this to be a move that elevates the club, changes the offense, makes it a productive offense. Not inspiring on paper, but the game isn't played on paper. The game is played on the field and we'll see him in February. Maybe we're all maybe I'm wrong on this. Hope so. Hope so. Hope so. All right. So that's it um, for, t for today. That's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to go studio show or remote, but full full normal show. we got some other news around the Rapids world we'll be talking about. Um, 
you know, we'll, we'll look ahead to sort of some offseason stuff. What are we kind of looking for? What other moves can fit into this? And then um, – <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> Shout out, Caitlin. Our sales team is in. From All City Sales, hell yeah. Um, Kick her and, out of uh, here. Other than that, guys, let's uh, let's up the pids. <laughs>